is October 7th already in a series of virtual meetings that continue to get improved attendance. So keep putting out the word. I think we're getting a little bit better at it as we go along. Uh, thanks everyone for signing in. Um, the, pledge, the pledge and prayer today is Bill Schilling. Are you gonna put up a flag? You know what? I didn't. I, I didn't have one. It. There you go. There. <laughs> All right. I pledge allegiance yes, to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, and, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. God of creation, you have blessed us with the changing seasons. May the brilliant colors of the leaves remind us of the wonders of your creation. May the harvest from the fields remind us of the abundance we have been given and the bounty we are to share with others. May the dying of summer spirit remind us of your great promise that death is temporary and life is eternal. Thank you, Lord, for these many, many blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. Bill, thank you for that. Very appropriate. Uh, before we start our meeting, I'll remind Bill that he has an anniversary coming up on 10-9. I'm sure you've got your gift picked out and a wonderful day planned already. Got her a groundhog hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, club anniversaries, we've got Jay Baird at 10-8-18, Terry Hunt at 10-11-89, and Etta at 10-13-10. So, you folks, congratulations. The program today is Susie Sadler, uh, and I'll just stop at that. She's got a, a wonderful presentation planned. So, Susie, can you take it away? Sure thing. Let's get the screen shared. And of course, it worked great in the test. And I can okay, see it. how you doing? Are you seeing it? Yes. yes. And I hate that when people say that, but I, I unfortunately can't see what you're seeing, so um, it it makes it a little bit tough. There we go. Hey guys, welcome to our annual. Hefner Awards presentation. Normally, we'd be all together in the Knolls enjoying a nice lunch, spending time with our scholarship recipients and their families, but the gift of COVID keeps on giving. Today, we're reviewing the Hefner grants that we supported this last year. And again, normally this program would have taken place in May, but again, to the gift of COVID, this year, we have added to our program grants that were made from the club funds that support the Oxford community. Um, man, many of these grants are greatly needed due to COVID thing again. Um, so gosh, it looks like we have a, a theme going on today. Um, let me first say that today's presentation would not be possible without you the members and all the time and effort spent on Stars and Stripes. So I thank you for that. So let's talk a little bit about our club history, I, which I kind of found interesting when I was putting information together for this program. You know, since the beginning, our clubs have been very active in giving back to the community. The club's first fundraiser was introduced by our charter member, Bob Hefner, and it was a birthday fund. Members on their birthday would give gifts to this fund, and this was the only fundraiser that the club had. Soon the club realized they needed to raise more funds than just for the birthday club, and so they got very creative and actually held two roasts in the 1980s. 
Um, the first was roasting Dick Schreider, who was our athletic, Miami's athletic director at the time. And then the second roast was uh, roasting our own national football coach legend, Weave Eubank. In the 1990s, under the presidency of Jim Rohr, we started our longstanding golf scramble, which a lot of you on this call today uh, remember and were participants in and helped put it together. But unfortunately, later years in the tournament, we needed we knew that we needed to freshen up our club fundraiser. So here we are today with Stars and Stripes, which has by far been our best money maker for the club. And in addition, it's become a civic tradition in Oxford, as well as strengthening our partnerships with our youth sports team, the Boy Scouts, and even our brothers and sisters in the Lions and Qantas clubs as they've taken over many of our flag routes, routes. So, remember that birthday fund that I was talking about that Bob Hefner began when the club started in the 1960s? Well, in 1988, the club unanimously voted to change the fund's name to the Hefner Fund in honor of the great work that Bob Hefner had done for the club. Can you believe that in the 32 years since the changing of the name, the Hefner Fund has given out more than $650,000 in worthwhile grants? Wow, guys, look at the impact that we've made in Oxford. So let's talk about how we are funding the Hefner Club today. Each quarter, our members, you all, give a $45 contribution to the fund. Now, depending on the membership numbers, this equals anywhere from eleven dollars to $12,000 a year to the fund. In addition to that, uh, due to the great success of the Stars and Stripes program, um, Stars and Stripe also gives us an additional $13,000 a year. So typically our Hefner budget runs around $25,000 a year. So let's get the show on and look, look at, um, let's look at the Hefner grants that we supported this past year. Um, I'd like to introduce Casey Woodell, Director of Oxford Parks and Rec, to talk about the first two grants on the list that we gave to the Parks and Rec. Thank you, Casey, for joining us today and, and hop on, um, unmute yourself and jump on. Uh, okay, well, can, can you all hear me okay? Uh, all right, well, I want to start by uh, thanking you for allowing me to be here today. Uh, Rotary Club has been uh, extremely supportive of Parks and Rec for many years in many different ways. So, uh, you know, today's focus is just about a couple of the grants from 2020, but, you know, over the years you've given us, uh, you know, given to us in so many different ways. Uh, and so we, we very much appreciate that. And I appreciate you, Susie, asking me uh, to speak to the club today. So um, a, a couple of these grants, I'm actually going to jump down to number two to start with. And the reason for that is I'm actually sitting here in the team center uh, right now, and I happen to be sitting at the table that um, the Rotary has funded to be up here in the teen center. So I don't know how many of you have had a chance to be up here and see this. I will try to give you sort of a perspective view there. I know your screens might be small, but um, you can see how new this facility is. We've got the TVs, the game systems. Um, we've got an air hockey table over my shoulder here, which is brand new and was paid for by Tri Health. Um, and then we've got up on the wall a basketball hoop, and then we've got this study table uh, that I'm, I'm sitting at now. So uh, that was the primary source of the funds for, or excuse me, the donation from Rotary towards the teen center was to give us this study space. Because uh, while we know that teens love to play games and, and love to be social and be on their phones and their tablets, uh, we also know it's important for them to study uh, and keep up in school. So we did want this to be a, a, an important part of the teen center was a place they could bring their Chromebook from school or bring their books and, and also get some study time in. So um, speaking of the teen center, uh, it's been an interesting go of things. We were actually scheduled to uh, do our grand opening the same night that 
essentially everything shut down March 16th. We had this big opening scheduled and that was the same day the state of Ohio essentially went into shutdown mode. So we put that on hold for several months and then we officially uh, reopened or, or opened for the first time on August 31st. Uh, had a few teens in here. Um, but I will, I will admit it's been slow going since that date. Um, the teens aren't out and about as much as they were and, and them not being in school means they're kind of not in proximity during our hours when, when we're open. So uh, we're hopeful and we believe that the kids are going back to school will help improve uh, the amount of teens that we see here in the teen center. Uh, and we're also doing an event this Friday night free for any teen that wants to come uh, called a lock-in. Uh, so we're going to show a uh, new Halloween movie on our giant inflatable screen. We're going to live stream the Talawanda football game so they can watch that uh, for those that can't actually go to the game. Um, and we'll give out uh, free food and drinks and, and just, just a way to get teams here in the facility, let them check it out. Of course, they'll wear masks and, and we'll do our best to, to social distance and the weather's supposed to be nice so we can do sort of an indoor outdoor thing. So, you know, we're, we're trying to make sure we're following all the city pro protocols while we do these events, but we do want to make sure the teens know that this space is here for them. Uh, it's a safe space. It's a clean space uh, and it's somewhere they can go and, and be with their friends. So uh, we appreciate your contribution towards helping us make this, uh, this center happen for uh, sixth through 12th grade kids here in Oxford. So I will then, I'll move on to uh, the $2,000. That was originally allocated for swim lessons for the aquatic center over the summer. Uh, but due to COVID, uh, we did not have swim lessons. We felt like um, we weren't able to do that and stick within the guidelines that were set forth by the state at that time. You know, it's really hard to teach someone to swim if you can't touch them or be within six feet of them. So we asked and you kindly obliged to reallocate that money to lifeguard training. So we put on a free lifeguard class before the summer kicked off. Uh, we had seven uh, brand new lifeguards get certified and work at the aquatic center this summer. And while that may not sound like a huge number, that was probably 25% of our workforce uh, in terms of lifeguards over the summer. So it was to us, that was a huge number um, because we needed every single lifeguard that we had this summer to make the pool operate. Uh, and as you can imagine, we actually needed more staff than usual to uh, fit the guidelines that the state put out for running an outdoor pool for the summer. So um, while most pools in the state opted to close, we felt it was best to open and, and stick within those guidelines. And uh, it was a, a different summer. It was a more difficult summer. Uh, we weren't able to, to serve as many students or as many families because of our capacity restrictions that the state and the local health departments put on us. Uh, but we still did have, I think, around 15,000 people come to the pool over the summer over the course of about nine or 10 weeks. So uh, we felt it was very successful. We felt it gave at least some sense of normalcy to the summer uh, for our families. Uh, and it brought a lot of attention even from outside of of the city, which in terms of economic development is good for our local businesses to get people uh, bringing their money into Oxford and spending it at our businesses, our restaurants, our shopping, things like that. So um, that was, in, that, you know, it was, a, it was a huge benefit for you to allow us to, to put that class on. Um, and it's going to have long-term effects. So it wasn't just about getting through the summer. Most of the guards that we certified through that class uh, were younger guards, high school students. So we anticipate they'll be back. So it, it will continue to give back to us and to the community. Uh, and you know what, even if they don't, those guards learned uh, CPR and first aid. Um, they learned about work ethic and teamwork and responsibility. And, and being a lifeguard is not what most people think it is anymore. It's not just sitting in a chair uh, and, and looking pretty. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of responsibility. Uh, and it's a very fast paced uh, a job. Uh, that, that requires a lot of training and continual training. So we appreciate what you did for us, but also what you did for those students and, and what you were able to allow them to learn through that class. So um, if there are any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them uh, at this time. No, Lee. <laughs> so what... Um... <clears throat> 
what would the pool opening in a prior normal sequence look like as compared to what you were forced to do this year? So uh, a lot of our work was on the front end in terms of um, putting out social distancing markers. We painted stencils all over the facility to keep people six feet apart. Uh, we actually put markers out on the fencing and on the concrete saying, here's locations where your family can sit so that uh, they can stay distance. Uh, but then every single day we're required to uh, hire and have on staff from, from open to close someone whose job was to clean and the social distance people. So they'd walk around and if you weren't six feet apart from another family, we'd ask you to move to a new location. Uh, we would wipe down high touch surfaces the entire day. That's all, that's all one staff member would do is walk the facility and wipe down railings, doorknobs, handles, bathrooms, anywhere that we thought people were touching on a regular basis. Uh, we had to pay someone to be at the pool all summer long to wipe that down. So. Um, and then concessions was a very different look than we're used to having uh, because we, we only had prepackaged food items this year. We didn't, we didn't cook and sell hot food like we normally would. We had this great partnership with La Rosa's that we couldn't continue because we, we weren't serving, you know, hot food and anything that we had to touch that had to go out the window. We wanted to be in a package just, just for safety concerns. So um, it was a very different looking summer, but we tried our best to make it look as normal as we could to uh, the guests coming through the gates. Casey, thank you so much for your time today. I tell you, I, I know the club loves everything that you guys are doing at the pool um, and with the new teen center, and it's just really exciting stuff. And again, it just helps enhance Oxford's community. So we certainly thank you for that. Um, as looks you look like, down uh, the list, looks like Michael there has. Oh, uh, Michael, you have a, a quick question. You need to unmute, please. There you go. I'm unmuted. I had a question to ask about the pools at the end of the season. Did the relax? Uh, was there any relaxation of the sanitizing? because of what we have learned uh, about the uh, virus. No, by the time we closed, we had not changed anything that we were doing in terms of cleaning uh, both the high touch services and the bathroom areas, uh, and then the end of the shift cleaning. And actually we were closing the facility for an hour in between the two different swim sessions we had and just cleaning in between sessions as well. So we did not relax what we were doing um, by the third week of August, which is when we closed for the season. Has the health department relaxed those at all uh, in uh, since that time? Um, you know, I don't know if they have. I don't. It doesn't feel like they have in, in terms of like keeping public restrooms open at the park. Uh, you know, we know that they're still on top of that in in terms of regular cleaning that we have to do in order to to open those bathrooms. So uh, we haven't felt any relaxation, and if anything. Uh, even if the, the county health department has relaxed, as, as many of you may know, the city of Oxford uh, has sort of tightened things down uh, even beyond what the local health department requires. So uh, we're, we're doing our best to fit within every guideline and policy that the city or the health department has requested. Can I chime in and just talk about what the library is doing? We've actually tightened ours too. We were quarantining materials for um, three days or four days and then we've jumped it to seven days so we're actually extending that quarantine period for returned materials. Yeah. Great information. Casey it looks like we need to bring you back to a meeting because it looks like there's a lot of great questions um, but for time's sake we're gonna keep moving on the, on the program but um, thank you again for joining us today. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to come back. And if you don't mind, I'm going to throw a quick plug in for October 29th. We're doing a drive through circus for free. I won't get into all details because I know you have a lot of things going on, but look it up. It's going to be really awesome and it's free for anybody that wants to come. So, Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So as we look down the list um, that you see in front of you, you see a lot of many uh, familiar grants that we've done in the, in the past. Um, plus, you'll also notice um, the impact that COVID's had on our grants this year. 
you know, typically there's a lot of field trips um, for the students, trips to Washington, D.C., uh, Boys and Girls State, um, and other special programs that typically we find in the schools. Um, so this year, as you can imagine, um, we were not asked for any grants. Uh, but no doubt these requests will um, continue once things get back to, to normal. When you look at the list, um, one of our newest and most fulfilling grants that we gave for the first time this year was to the Kramer School Breakfast Club. Um, Dan Maurer was the one who really brought this to our attention. The Breakfast Club provides breakfast once a week to Kramer students whose circumstances at home are such that they come to school hungry in the morning. In addition to providing a nice breakfast for the students, a group of teachers who actually run this program and fund the program on a volunteer basis uses the time during the breakfast to read stories to the students and I, as well as help them with their homework. Um, so Dan um, was able to go to one of the breakfasts, um, uh, one of the mornings and was just told the group how the great impact that our grant is making on these students. So that was really a super exciting grant. Um, another new grant that we gave this year um, was for a book program that was a partnership between the Oxford Food Pantry and Us Born Books. So today we have with us Kate Bird here to talk about the program and how our grant was spent. Kate, welcome. Hi. Bye. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, I'm learning a lot. This is great. Um, I am Kate Bird. I am a community member. I was born and raised in Oxford. I am an educational service representative for Usborne Books and More. Um, I've got two little girls that go to Kramer. My husband is a police officer at Miami, and I also am a former reading teacher from Kramer as well. Um, when I spent my time at Kramer, I realized there were a lot of students here that don't have books at home. They don't have the, you know, the resources and the activities to do at home. And when quarantine hit, um, that became more of a pressing issue for me. Um, I wanted to make sure that these kids who normally access the books and the resources in their classroom to take home would have something in their house for them to read um, in case we are ever in a situation where we might be in quarantine again, however long this lasts. So myself and a couple other community members decided that we wanted to run a book drive and we contacted Ann Fuhrer at TOPS and she said that she would love to have books for the children to either put in their food bags when they come to pick them up or that the kids could actually kind of shop while they are there when they're picking up their foods with their with their family. So we raised over a thousand dollars and thanks to your donation, uh, your very generous donation, we got to exceed that donation a little bit more. And Usborne Books and More actually matches whatever donations we collect by 50%. So we ended up with over $1,500 in books. Um, to be able to pick out. We spent time picking out books from all age levels. We have activity books, chapter books, reading books, learn to read books. Um, we spent some time, you know, making sure we could accommodate everyone that comes to TOPS into the food pantry. Um, and we, due to delivery restrictions and COVID and some other things, we hadn't been able to deliver them yet, but I actually am headed there today to meet with Anne and we are delivering about $600 worth of books and educational materials to the food pantry today. So I am really excited um, to share those pictures with you um, after, you know, this afternoon when we're done doing that. Um, but reading is something that is very close to my heart and you know, the students that I was teaching, they just didn't have any books of their own at home. And we wanted to make sure that we gave them some materials that they could use and, and kind of keep in the home when we're, we're stuck at home. So we are so appreciative um, and so grateful for that donation. So thank you for giving that to us. Hayden, thank you for putting the program together and, and partnering with the Food Pantry, a great program. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So um, at this point, um, I'd like to have Rebecca Smith, who chairs our scholarship committee, 
to bring us up to date on this year's award winners. Another little fun fact in, in doing some um, history uh, search and, and the Rotary Records. Um, we awarded our first scholarships to Talawanda students in 1990. Um, we awarded three winners, $500. Um, then in 1995, we bumped it up to six scholarship winners, um, each getting $1,000. And um, I'm delighted to say that um, Rebecca and her group were able to award 12 uh, scholarship this year at a thousand dollars. So Rebecca, take on over. All right, thank you for this opportunity. Well this year uh, Fred and Bob and I received the packet from the Community Foundation of the applicants. Uh, we have seen an increase in the application so that's uh, good and we each assess them and then we through email this year usually we meet um, but this year through email and notes, we came up with the 12 people that we thought were deserving. And we, of course, assessed them for their academic achievement, their community service, their school activities, and their financial need. And so this year, um, there's the 12 students that won a scholarship, were awarded a scholarship, and I will highlight uh, few of them with some details. So Jennifer uh, is going to Miami Hamilton to study biology. Sydney Kai Brown is at Miami Oxford studying biochemistry and her goal is to become a doctor someday. Elizabeth Urbanwine is at Auburn University, that's down in Alabama, and she's studying fashion merchandising. And then the next two, Madeline and Michaela Evans are uh, two of triplets. They are both at Ohio State University. Madeline is studying biology and her sister is studying molecular genetics. And I just want to highlight a few things about Madeline um, that I learned or remembered from her application, but also her thank you note. She started uh, doing community service with her grandfather when she was little at the St. Mary's Church. And then she also did some work at the Oxford Food Pantry. And she wrote in her thank you note, and I just thought it was very um, endearing. She said, in the fall, I plan to attend Ohio State University at their Columbus campus, pursuing a degree in biology with a specialization in pre-professional medicine. My dream is to graduate from medical school and become a doctor specializing in pedi pediatrics or helping lower income communities around the world. She said, I hope that throughout my college career and professional life, I will strive to embody great citizenship and selfless service to those in need. I thought that was really a nice comment. Um, and then Cora Freed is down in Flagler University, which is in St. Augustine. In Florida studying elementary education. Dylan Hayline is at Miami University studying biology and Adriana Lehman is studying, um, well she had a combination nursing or special education but then in her thank you note she thought that she was probably going to combine these two and study um, developmental disabilities nursing so she could combine those two uh, professions that she was interested in. And Dalton Norris is at the Farmers Business School studying supply chain management. Eleanor Prithridge is at Miami uh, studying English literature. She was a founding member of the Telewanda Diversity Club, also a Best Buddy program, and uh, played the violin in the orchestra. She hopes to be a high school literature teacher um, in recognition of all the teachers that have supported her um, love of reading and writing. And then Dalton Slitzer is studying at the University of Northwestern Ohio Agricultural and Diesel Technician. Uh, he was really, uh, his thank you note was very appreciative um, for the, the scholarship because he will be funding his school um, by himself. 
And then Nicholas Wong is at Miami University studying chemical engineering. So they would have been, uh, I think, I think we all enjoy when they come to Rotary and for the luncheon. And um, I think what the committee is always very impressed with how these students are able to um, have high academic achievements while successfully balancing um, sports and community activities and extracurricular and also many of them have jobs so they're always an impressive uh, bunch and it's sometimes very difficult to choose from. So, thank you. Wow Rebecca what an impressive group. Um, you got a lot of superstars in there and it's fun to hear a lot want to go into the medical field. Mm -hmm. Thank you to you Bob and Fred. Um, I know from dad that um, it takes hours to go through these applications and yet it's it's a labor of love and I really want to encourage more of our members next year to help um, Rebecca and her team out in reading these applications um, because I think it's very rewarding. So again thank you again Rebecca. All right so Let's go on to the Rotary Club funds. This is a new area that we're adding to the Hefner Awards program um, now, just because um, due to the success of Stars and Stripes, um, we've been able to really develop a robust club fund um, that can be able to use for different projects in the community. Unlike Hefner, which really is there to support youth projects, um, the club fund can be used for any type of project that Rotary wants to do or a project in the community. And your Rotary board um, are the ones who uh, review the applications for these grants and approve them. Um, again, I'll put a, a little plug out for the board. We're always looking for great things to support, whether it's for in, through our club fund or Hefner fund. Um, so please let one of us know if, if you have a great um, opportunity or grant that you know of. Um, this past year, the club fund had a budget of $6,000. And I'd like to get Dodie to jump on um, now to kind of talk about some of the funds and activities we did this year. And again, you're going to see that COVID theme with a lot of the grants that we gave. Dodie? Thanks, Susie. Um, this year we've been really busy um, and being off work really helped me. We started out with um, actually the cookie caper. So uh, I was concerned about Mary Evans and she does love those cookies and I was going to take her some cookies. And I thought, you know, we should, we should just do everyone at the Knoll. So we did everyone at the Knowles. I had Corey helping, um, Rebecca helped, Brian Reveille, um, Susie. If I'm missing someone, I, I apologize. But um, we went to the Knowles and we were like, wow, this is really fun. It was a beautiful day. We delivered cookies to everyone at the Knowles. So we thought, you know, let's just do the whole club. So over the next month, we delivered cookies to most everyone in the club. And I think everyone really enjoyed that. So the next project we came up with was um, Nathan came to us um, from the hospital. And he wanted to know if we would serve lunch to some of the employees that don't get recognized. Because doctors and nurses were getting recognized. They were getting food every day. They were getting little gifts every day. Um, so we decided to do lunch um, for those hospital members. We served 85 lunches from La Rosa's. Um, they were ecstatic. Uh, Pam Collins from the hospital came out. We did pictures. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, the next is the community food bank. I believe we just did a donation to them. Uh, as, and then the Oxford Senior Citizens, we did a donation. Everyone is needing a little extra help this year. Um, the next fun one was uh, Nurses Day. So we delivered donuts to the Knowles, um, the hospital, the fire department, the police department, Miami 
Police Department, and then Oxford View or Oxford Healthcare. Uh, I'm going. I'm showing my age by saying Oxford View. Um, they were they were so surprised. Um, they were probably the most surprised out of everyone that they. I think they get left out a little. So um, that was that was very fun. Um, the Braves baseball team. You know, I kind of wasn't in on that one, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, did we just give a donation? Dan? Yeah, we supported uh, one of the little league teams. Okay, okay. Um, same with International Water Project. Um, we gave a donation with that. Also, Rotarian of the Year. Thank you so much. Um, and I have not actually given um, what I'm giving my money towards. But I've decided to do elderly care services. Uh, my mother has not been well, and we have used some of those services. So Oxford Empty Bowls is coming up. Um, I believe you can just go in and um, pick a bowl out. I did see something about that the other day. So they are not going to be having their full fundraiser, so they're going to really need some help. Knowles Care Fund, um, that was just a donation given we like to support the Knowles because they support us. Uh, we, we have a lot of functions at the Knowles. They, they do not charge us for the room. They give us a really good deal on our food, so we always like to um, support them. Oxford Community Foundation COVID Fund, um, a member placed um, a donation and then we matched it and then just last week the Miami University Rotor Act Club um, we gave a, a donation to their fundraiser. A couple things that um, or one thing that I forgot to mention to Susie to add on here was Dan came to us um, about Oxford Healthcare which is the nursing home there on Fairfield Road. He said, um, or he told us that they are having a hard time with activities. So I know Pam at um, Oxford Healthcare, and I gave her a call, and I said, hey, you know, what can we do to help? She got me in touch with the activities director, and they received 28 cents a day per resident um, for activities, which is not a whole lot. So what she needed was prizes to give out for bingo. They're not doing a whole lot of activities right now because of COVID, but that was one thing she was lacking. So we gave a donation um, towards that. Susie and I both had bags of gifts and little just little doodads that we had around the house, Kleenex, um, lotions, uh, little keychain, all kinds of little things that we threw in a bag. We also do donated those. Um, when I took the check to them, it was very heartwarming. They met me at the door. They knew I was coming, and they met me at the door along with about a dozen or so um, staff members and applauded. So it was very, very heartwarming um, that day to give them that money. So we have we have given a lot of money out this year, and hopefully next year we can give even more. Thanks. Gosh, that's great, Dodie. Thank you so much. And and again, it's exciting. Um, the support that we're getting from Stars and, and Stripes um, and the contributions that we're able to give through that program to the tune of $19,000 this year. So that's, that's awesome. Um, I just want to take a, a minute here. Um, on the screen, you see your Hefner board members. Um, thank you to the board members here. Um, we always also have the treasurer and the president-elect um, on the board as ex officio members. Um, but I wanna thank, thank the group here for their time and 
reviewing the grants. We meet typically four times a year and, and review the grants um, and decide what we want to support. Again, I'm going to put another plug out. If anybody else is interested in um, joining the Hefner board, let me know. We're always looking for fresh blood um, to be on the board and, and it's a very rewarding um, time spent uh, deciding on grants. So this concludes this year's program. Again, I can't thank you guys enough, our Rotarians, for your magnificent support of our club projects and the impact that you've made in the Oxford community. Um, you're the ones who made these awards happen. Um, it was great to hear from Casey and, and Kate um, directly about the, the wonderful things um, that our money's doing. Thank you, Rebecca, and your report on all our students. Um, and Dodie, thank you for heading up kind of the club fund and, and the activities that we have done this year. So Dan, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Well, Susie, thank you so much. Uh, as, as always, extremely well organized and presented and uh, thanks for bringing in the folks that, that you did. Um, you know, I was kind of blown away that, you know, we've done $650,000 during the, the course of this for this community. So, uh, you know, Stars and Stripes is a lot of work. We all know that, but, but look at the other side of it and all of the things that it does. So, uh, yes, it's a lot of work and yes, we get a lot of, uh, we are able to do a lot with the money. So thanks to all of you. Okay, Kate uh, and Casey, you guys can bail at this point. Again, thank <laughs> you um, for joining us. Okay, um, in terms of our, our club business, uh, I don't think Ed is on the call today. I'm not sure. Uh, <clears throat> Bob, anything on reopening ideas? Uh, no, not not really. But I, I did want to ask exactly where the memorial service will be today, Oxford Cemetery. But exactly where in the cemetery will it be? So um, the little chapel up on the hill. Okay. It'll be up in that area. Okay. Thanks. So I hope everyone can come. Um, I don't know if my postcard got out. Yeah, I got, it. Not. I got it. I got it. Oh, good. 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 Okay. Susie did not. So um, I mailed them Friday night, just like Jack told me. I took them inside. I did everything he told me to do. So I don't know. Uh, I called Joan Green. She said she did not know about it. And I also called Kate Westmeiser. West, yeah, Kate, uh, to, and left a message to her. So. Uh, okay. Thank have. you. Okay, is there any other club business? <coughs> Please uh, uh, remember the memorial service this afternoon. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon, so uh, take a few minutes, come out if, you, if uh, your schedule allows. Jody, thank you for that. Um, happy Bucks. Anybody happy about anything this week? <laughs> Michael is. We got on mute, Michael. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I've already contributed a couple of dollars I sent to Jack uh, with my dues. Uh, I, I got a good report back from my dermatologist and I don't have any more skin cancer. So I do a yearly thing on my, around my birthday every year with her. So uh, fortunately she has an office here in town that I can, she tends to once a once every uh, month. So I was able to see her right here in Oxford. Thank you, Michael. Anyone else? Pat? Yeah, a um, couple things. I just sent last quarter's happy bucks to Jack, so you should get that in a couple days. But uh, this is the first week of ILR for Miami, uh, and I've seen a number of you in uh, uh, various uh, presentations already. Um, we're doing it completely virtually this year, which has uh, been a learning experience for a lot of us. Um, but we've got 
uh, about 50% of our normal student body signed up for virtual classes and we're offering almost 60 classes so uh, it's going reasonably well um, you know a few technical issues but uh, we're blundering through so um, again one of the uh, the uh, more attractive features of Oxford if you uh, are committed to lifelong learning so uh, we'll we'll throw some money into to rotary for that and of course, we've thrown money into the ILR for that, too, but that's another issue. Thanks. Anyone else? Corey? Yeah, I'll throw in three happy bucks, one for each of my kids. Um, they, uh, they're they very brilliant girls and, and have absolutely no struggles in school, but uh, I believe it was the last week... Um, I found what motivates them at their respective sports, and uh, I had nothing to pay for it. So my daughter, who runs cross country, I screamed in the final 200 yards. Uh, she got out of her chores for every, she got out of her chores one day for each person she passed. And um, then I may have screamed if she passed a certain number, she got to make her sister do her chores. So she uh, managed to pass like five or six kids. And so I had nothing to do, but I, I uh, motivated one child and angered another. Um, and then uh, I may have volunteered my wife to do chores if my other two scored goals in soccer. And within five minutes, we had of each uh, bribe had a goal. And my daughters play midfield. So that's, they're not necessarily strikers. Um, so I found what motivates my children and angers my wife. So I, uh, I think I have to pay a dollar for each of those. <laughs> I've received, I've Flowers received to your wife might help. What's that? Yes. Flowers to your wife okay. might help. So Rosemary, I'll throw in another dollar because we're currently uh, Oxford cabinets installing a brand new kitchen. So she'll be, she'll be fine. That will be really nice. Ex except this part when they're working on it and you're living in the house. Been there, done that. Jack, you had somebody, something? Yeah, well, I wanted to, re to remind you all that uh, checks can come in. We've had uh, six or seven that I've received and I received uh, happy bucks on at least two of those checks. So all of you that are being so generous during the meetings putting happy bucks in, you probably haven't written your check yet there's a place in your uh, on the invoice to make a note of that, and we're recording that, and we're giving. Uh, I'm actually keeping score, so uh, we'll. Uh, I'm, I've added that that and the founders fund too, which uh, we've now passed about a thousand dollars that has been contributed towards uh, towards uh, the, the founders fund, which is at the uh, uh, community foundation. So that also is a possibility, and we're. We'll be recording and passing that on those those monies on to the foundation. So thank you all and keep the money coming. Thanks, Jack. Anyone else? I will. Um, so I started a new job in February and um, so I'm a sales rep for gifts, home decor and clothing. My, I got my totals last week and I am 5% up from um, the rep last year at this time. And I've missed four months because I didn't start till the middle of February. That was some training and then two months off for COVID. And basically I didn't sell much during that. So I am ahead of the schedule. So thank you. Congratulations. Dan, if I, if I could, I, I don't have a happy buck, but I do have a question uh, for Randy. Uh, are you sitting in your living room? I'm on my screen and porch on the back. Very nice. That's a question buck and an answer buck. <laughs> okay, we can do that. Is there, is there anything else? That is great. Um, I received an email from uh, Kathy Butterfield yesterday, and uh, her mother has just been diagnosed with cancer. So uh, keep her in your prayers, keep your family in the prayers. 
and uh, maybe a card, you know. Um, next meeting is 1014, it's virtual. Uh, Richard Norman is greeter. Pledge and Prayer is Jim Robinson. And Lee, do you know what the program is? Uh, yeah, uh, it was uh, Beth Blanks, who's no longer a member, but uh, Bob Thurston stepped in to reach out to his rather eclectic group of friends. And we will have a presentation by Paul Romanik on rescue efforts going on for California raptors, the birds. Uh, and just as an uh, reminder, uh, Lisa has the program already lined up, uh, the Ohio Council on the Aging for the 21st of October. Ralph is scheduled for the 28th to talk about the Rotary Foundation. Bob Keller, you and I have exchanging emails. You, you will need a speaker. Uh, we're up into Veterans Day with Marty Creech. And then as a reminder, Susie, you're also scheduled for the program on November the 18th. Thanks, Lee. And thanks to everyone for, uh, we, had a, we had another great attendance day today. Uh, spread the word, I think we're getting uh, a little better at the meetings and we're certainly getting good participation from the club. So uh, thanks to all. Okay. Uh, Dan, uh, may, I, may I put in a little extra plug for, for the California raptors? These birds are spectacular. They're so beautiful. They're fast. You wouldn't believe how fast some of these birds can fly. They're lethal. They're really important in the food chain. And uh, my friend has wonderful pictures. So I really hope you guys will, uh, will attend. It's going to be something quite different, but it's it's really important for the ecology of California, assuming that there will be a California in the future. But anyway, I hope you'll, you'll be around for that talk. Thanks, Bob. Anything else? Okay, our next meeting is next Wednesday. It's virtual, uh, 1145. Uh, please come, have stories, and, and have a great week. Uh, we'll leave the room open for anybody who wants to chat and otherwise sign off. Thank you. Hope to see you all tonight, too. Dan? Yes. Next week, uh, obviously, I won't probably be able to participate. Uh, and I will send out something to uh, uh, Betsy, but you know how to initiate the meeting, right? If you need to? Yes. Yeah, okay. So I'll, I'll coordinate with Betsy, one, one or the other of us, but not both of us will initiate okay. the meeting. That's fine. And I've recorded it today, so I'll make sure that that gets to Jonathan. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Okay, I'm, I'm going to sign off and uh, Thank you guys for coming and we'll talk to you soon. Okay.